Hello, welcome back all to Little Fish. It's been some time, but we're back. We're going to go through a lot of the things that we've been doing in the past few months, especially covering uh, our Fund 9 research proposals and what we've been doing and see if any of this can help our uh, help the ecosystem grow, especially the DAO ecosystem, which we've been uh, focusing on. Uh, Emir, could you share the slides? And then we can get yeah. started. Yeah, thank you. There we go, nice. Okay, so what we've been doing in the past, I guess, six months or so, uh, we've just been doing a lot of original research and it covers a variety of topics. In Fund9, what we did was we wrote a bunch of proposals uh, uh, on different uh, research topics, some covered the legal picture, some covered uh, decentralized organizations and the tools that uh, kind of make them work. Some covered uh, cross-chain uh, tools and what tools uh, kind of make cross-chain happen between Cardano and other chains. Uh, we also had applications to research just the organizational side, which didn't pass. But uh, what we're going to present today is just the work that uh, was funded and what we've been working on and uh, see hopefully some of our findings are going to be uh, beneficial to uh, to everybody in the ecosystem. So let's get started. We can go on to the next slide. All right, so the main focus of our work is just decentralized work. And this kind of started off uh, with uh, Gem getting us involved uh, back in late 2021, I think. Uh, and then he discovered uh, Catalyst Swarm, Project Catalyst itself. Uh, him and a few other guys like, got started off with the uh, Cardano for Climate. Uh, just a lot of people who kind of care about similar things, who want to work on similar things, just uh, coming together in Zoom calls, working together with different backgrounds. They don't know each other. They're from all over the world. Someone is from uh, Switzerland, someone is from Turkey, someone is from Canada, someone is from US. It's just a bunch of different people who don't know about each other, just kind of meeting up uh, spontaneously, finding a group, founding a group, and then just working together. So this is kind of something magical that doesn't happen in the real world, but it happened here. So uh, we got involved, uh, Jem, uh, getting getting me involved, and uh, Little Fish got started. But the thing is, like, we understood this was a bit different than what is usually going on. So it got us interested. And uh, during Fund9, one of our proposals was to kind of investigate this. Uh, how does it work? What is it, this decentralized work idea? Uh, who kind of does this work? And these organizations with the logos up there, Cattle Swarm, uh, Cattle for Climate, Gimbal Labs, Conma, and just a bunch of different groups all over uh, the web three verse and in project catalyst, uh, these kind of groups are kind of involved in this work. And really what is so different about it? And that question was uh, quite interesting to us. And at that point, we uh, came up with this idea of just three things that are really important here. It's global, this type of work. Everybody can join from wherever. It doesn't matter as long as you can just be up at that hour of the day. So, you know, New Zealanders don't really show up here, but I guess, you know, they're far away. Uh, it's self-managing work. You got to kind of do it your own. And it's it's remote. You just, there is no office. And these are the three pillars of our works. So we kind of centered our work around these ideas of trying to figure out how all of these can work a little bit better. Uh, we can go into the next slide. Anyway. Yeah, so we call this the bleeding edge of organizations. Uh, the bleeding edge of organizations because this type of work is just not happening in traditional organizations. And people are just experimenting with new ideas uh, on organizing. Uh, it's kind of organizations without hierarchy. Uh, and we cover a bunch of different types of organizations in, in our work. It's not just decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs. Uh, we consider those to be decentralized organizations as well. But like Little Fish, uh, for a long time, a decentralized organization, but not a DAO. 
uh, those examples I provided, not DAOs. They may be DAOs in the future, but you know they are these types of decentralized organizations that are working in a different way. So there's no, not quite such a word for it, but all of these different types of organizations, such as DAOs, just online communities, even Project Catalyst itself uh, is covered in these types of organizations that just a bunch of people coming together online, a Discord server, Zoom, and then just working on things that kind of matter to themselves. And these are the types of organizations we, that we try to understand with all of this work. Uh, and all our work has been just to understand how these organizations work, how we can make them work better, uh, what tools uh, these kind of need, and uh, we can go on to the next slide. So the first and big one uh, of our proposals that were funded in Fund 9 was tools of decentralized work. It covers three things, uh, which is DAO tools, something we call remote work tools, and ecosystem tools. And Emir has been taking on a lot of this work in the past few months. So he's going to take it away and show us through all the work that we've done and all the findings that we've come up with. Uh, please take it away. Come here. Hey everyone, I'm going to talk about the tools here. And let's start with the DAO tools. These tools are actually, uh, these DAO tools are tools specifically designed to help DAOs to function. Like they have to be either blockchain integrated or designed specifically for DAOs for like off chain working, for example. Uh, our DAO tool, we have categorize the DAO tools into these five categories. We have done a lot of research on different blockchains about the categorization. And this is probably the best we got. We have in total researched 11 DAO tools on Cardano. Uh, I think I can say we have researched the most of the DAO tools that are in Cardano. And so let's get to the categories. We have the governance category, the smart contract developments, the treasury management and payments, membership and reputation, and finally, token creation and management. Uh, let's start with the governance part, these tools. Uh, the governance tools are usually the ready to use tools like the web apps that are, where you can fill out some forms, register your DAO, like, and start your DAO's governance right away. These are very easy to use. And for ex some tools like Summon Platform allows you to conduct on-chain voting. And for example, the tool of Crystal does not support on-chain voting, but it allows you to conduct off-chain voting. The governance tools usually use governance tokens to give voting rights to the members of DAO. And we will talk about these tokens at the last category in more detail. Some tools we found on other chains for, for governance also allows con controlling the DAO's treasuries like and multi-sig wallets, but not many does in Cardano. Uh, now we have the smart contract development tools. These tools are designed for uh, developers, not, not not many people. These provide you smart contract libraries, ready to use ones. For example, Agora protocol does it. Collective protocol improves on it. Uh, and now can use these libraries and edit these smart contracts to their specific needs. For example, a DAO can that have a multi-sig wallet that does not accept this specific wallet, but a token to function. These tools allow you to build those much easily. And we have the treasury management and payment tools. We also we have two subcategories in these tools, which are the multi-sig wallets and the project management tools. Uh, Multi-sig wallets, like in Cardano, we have Brookland and Roundtable. These wallets are very different to the normal 
wallets we use. These are more like bank saves rather than wallets. Okay. We believe these multisig wallets very are very important and there are not many in Cardano. Like Brooklyn is still in test nets, roundtable is not the is not the best thing to use. And multisigs are really important to run DAOs, yeah. right? So exactly. Could you the tell us a bit is, about yeah, of course. The reason is like if you run a DAO without a multisig wallet, no matter how much governance you make, how democratic you are, your funds will be in control of a single individual. Like you have to trust that person, but the idea of blockchain is to trust the system, not the person. So multisig wallets allow you to set up these safes, which is in control of multiple individuals. Also, these wallets allow you to lock the funds until or before a specific date. So we believe that multisig wallets are very important and we need much more example of these. And like the example I mentioned before, there needs to be multisig wallets that act with tokens in the future, maybe like maybe above us amount of token holders can sign a multisig wallet. So this will allow the allow the multisig wallets to change in the future because in the current system you cannot change the smart contract of a multisig wallet. If a person leaves your DAO, good good luck having to sign sign these wallets. So these are still not perfect. Yeah, there's a lot and, to go. And I th I yeah. feel like if you don't have a multisig, that's the definition of a centralized system. Exactly. It you you either have like two options. You either have like your a smart contract managing all your funds, which is kind of weird because you're definitely going to have payments. If you're like an organization, you have payments that a smart can contract cannot know about, right? You just like yeah. There's so many different types of payments, and then if all of it goes through one person. That you're you're centralized, like yeah, it's a trusted you, person. Yep. Yeah, good luck with that. So you can't yeah. scale. So these technologies need to evolve uh, in yeah. Cardano for us to have like a great DAO Fully ecosystem. Fully decentralized. Yeah. These multi-sig wallets currently are just smart contracts. So just smart contracts currently. Like maybe in the future they have another much much better solution. And the other category is the project management tools. Uh, let me say why this is here, because these tools like allow you to post tasks, tasks and organize your projects. But most importantly, they automatic they automatically process payments to the tasks done by the members. So this is this should be a treasure management tool. In Cardano, we don't have any example of these kind of tools, but on Ethereum, we have a lot of them, like so many. Like one example we all know is Dwork. Dwork allows connection with Ethereum wallet and process payments automatically. Now let's go to the membership and reputation uh, tools. If I can add a few uh, in that category, is like coordinate, yeah, sure. source cred. Uh, these are types of tools that kind of take uh, track uh, the contributions made by different members of a community of a DAO, and they just make automatic payments based on those contributions. Uh, and these are all experimental. Most yeah. of them just don't work like you want them to work. They can be gamed, but people are trying these on uh, on different chains. Yeah. And I don't think we have anything like that on Cardano at this point. I believe in the future we will have a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next category is membership and reputation. This is where Cardano lacks also. These tools allow you to have token gating in your community, which is like giving access to specific token holders to the different parts of your DAO. This is very important because it prevents scamming very beautifully. And we also have resume building tools. Like in Ethereum, we have, I guess, Wanderverse, it was, I'm not sure. These tools allow you 
these tools give you NFTs like action NFTs we we are planning to build. And these on your wallets show you the work you've done before. So when you join a DAO with a resume like this, which is very safe, it usually brings down the entry process and finding what you want to do in the DAO much easily, like getting the attention of the right people. Yeah, uh, I'd like to just add one thing here. Yeah. Uh, so the work in uh, decentralized organizations is usually done by just, it can be done by anyone. Just someone can come in, take that work and yeah. do it, kind of like freelance work. The thing is some type of work require lots of expertise. It requires a good reputation. Can you actually do this type of work? Uh, so that freelance type of work hasn't evolved beyond uh, like geez, really serious stuff that requires someone of an expert level to come in and do that type of work. Uh, these type of tools that kind of build your resume, build your reputation uh, so that you can just go into a completely new environment, a new community, and then just say, look at all these things that I did. Like you can see uh, from this DAO, this DAO, this community has already said, like I've done this type of work already, you can trust me. Uh, like in the traditional business we have, stuff like LinkedIn kind of playing a similar role, but again, a very, uh, it's, it's not fulfilling this role completely because you hire through LinkedIn and then you find out three months later that you hired a terrible match for your company. Uh, so these are the things that's gonna work over the next few years to kind of solve that problem. And uh, we'll see how efficient these effective these tools are at actually solving these kinds of problems yeah then i believe they have a lot of potential because you cannot just mint yourself a token showing you done work for for example little fish it has to be minted by little fish mm -hmm. they're going to be very safe i believe if done correctly and finally we have token creation and management tools these tools allow you to design and make the tokens you want like we've seen tokens in and other tools like they are very important they allow you to conduct governance they allow you to manage your community with token gating so these tools help you with getting these to tokens and the most important part of token management token creation and management is how are you going to distribute these tokens? Like you have billions, millions of tokens, maybe hundreds and thousands of people to distribute them. These tools are very useful for that category. They, for, for example, support different methods like airdrop method. You just give it a list of people and how many tokens you'll get and it automatically does it in a single or very few transactions. Or you can have vending machine methods where your users have to get in a website, connect with wallet, and automatically claim their tokens if they are the right people. And these are DAO tools categories we have. Like when we've done the research on Cardano DAO tools and later I will mention the Ocean DAO tools, we have found that Cardano ecosystem focus, focuses on governance like we have 11 tools and six of them just focus on governance. This is understandable because the ecosystem is quite young. Like we have, we are trying to get as many people into it and the first stage is the setting up the governance of it. And as we all probably know, developing smart contracts on Cardano is really painful and takes a long time. So, Governance tools provide you with these tools without writing a single line of code. We also don't have, as I mentioned, many membership and reputation tools. And the payment tools, like what I mean payment by payment is the tools like DWORK, doing tasks, managing automatic payments. I believe like the reputation, membership reputation and these payments tool numbers will increase in the future. And let's focus on the other category we have, remote no, work tools. Be, be, 
before we hop into that, maybe we can uh, show the uh, Git book and what it looks like over there. Maybe I can just uh, yeah. hop into the screen sharing and show for yeah, sure. this short while. Yeah, sure. So this is our new research hub. All the research that we do related to everything that we're sharing today, our legal stuff and ocean tech is just all here. Uh, so for Cardano DAO tools, this is what we're talking about. It's We have a lots of different governance tools that are either in development or they're online, just got online. Uh, but this is all just fundamental stuff. It's the basic stuff. But beyond that, we don't have much. So everything is built on the Agora protocol. Nothing else in there. Token creation and management. We have some tools here that you can use to create tokens and then drop tokens to your community members. Membership and reputation. We only have the Hazelnet bot, which kind of serves this purpose, but not, exactly. not really. It's the Discord bot. You know, it's uh, it's like it's kind of serves the purpose. And we have two uh, multi-sig wallets, but as Emir said, no tools to actually deliver. Uh, payments into the hands of uh, contributors. You kind of need all of these things so that the DAO can you know, start clicking. And it's not that you need governance first. Maybe you need the membership stuff first, depending on your use case. And we kind of need to develop all of these things so that uh, real DAO use cases can start blossoming uh, in Cardano. Please take it back. Yeah. Okay. And now we have the remote work tools. These tools, like uh, these tools are not specifically designed for those, but these tools are there to help people work remotely. But when we went to remote work in the coronavirus pandemic, we have encountered much unanticipated problems. For example, how to communicate, how to collaborate. These were hard. So we have found a lot of tools uh, explaining how to solve these, how to help these, and other kind of tools here must uh, use AI technology, help you to boost your productivity and create better content in a shorter time. So these are the remote work tools. Most of these tools are also used by DAOs and members of DAOs, but not necessarily have to be used by them. Uh, we have communication tools like Zoom, where you can have meetings and communicate with others. We have collaboration tools. An example is Miro, where you can work with a group of people like you're in the same room working on a board. We have developer tools like GitHub, GitLab, help developers to contribute to the projects. Um, now we have content generation tools. These tools like can be useful for everyone, not necessarily remote workers. These help you to create articles, videos, or voiceovers much easily and in much higher quality with the help of AI technologies. And we have publication tools here. These are important because when you do your work, you, you need to show what you've done. And these tools help you to, help you to organize websites and maybe email subscriptions to show your content to the public. This example is Gitbook or Obsidian. And now we have social media management tools. These tools also serve the purpose of publication. Like it allows you to show what you've done to the outside people. These are very useful tools for organizations because, as you know, a lot of companies just have teams just to manage social medias of their platforms. And these tools help you to automize these processes. Like you can schedule posts or generate new posts, get feedback from the tool, how your post done, like how you got interactions. And we have the our miscellaneous tools. 
uh, not many tools in there and did not fit into other categories. Like we have chat GPT here, not need to explain what it is. We have AI lawyer, which helps you to read legal documents and get legal consultancy without having to pay your entire fortune to lawyers. But I suggest get to the lawyer if it's serious. And we have like tools like there is AI, which helps you to research different topics. In total, we have 50 different documents here in your multi work tools, which are, which are very valuable. They help you to set up your remote working environment quite easily. And we will pass to the ecosystem tools here. These tools uh, help you to interact with the blockchain. What I mean is using wallets, decentralized finance, or the cross chain. Uh, I will start with wallets here. Here you see a very big table might be very confusing, but I'll go over it easily. We have a different... detailed wallet comparison available on Cardano. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I know, because I, I know all the other guys who built wallet comparisons, is none of them is just this detailed. So. Like when we put this on Twitter, gets uh -huh. huge reactions. A lot yeah. of people crying why our wallet is not in there, and we immediately add them usually. Yeah, so some other guy had a, a, a wallet comparison, which I just uh, kind of reposted this. I didn't get a reply. It was like, he didn't like that. <laughs> didn't yeah, like that. visual Twitter. Uh, what I would say is you can see these categories in two ideas. One category is utility. For example, seeing USD value of your assets or NFT display, very important you have. For example, dApp connection. Can you use your wallet to connect different dApps or multiple wallet support? And the other category is the security one. For example, cold wallet support, can you use it like that? Or is it open source? And another important category is developer activity. It was very hard to get because we had to track these guys. Are they still working on it? Um, it was hard. But as you can see, almost all of them are continuously developed, except Ray Wallet. Another utility idea or maybe security we can call test that support can you try this wallet with different scenarios on your by yourself and uh, oh, sorry i messed up we decided to like if you see this has its own token category it has inverted colors it's not a mistake but twitter doesn't like it we decided that if a wallet has its own token, it's not a good thing actually. So the cross is green and the tick is red. Most wallets don't have tokens here, as you can see. Uh, I want to mention different the platforms they work on. For example, Eternal, very useful on that platforms. It has extension support or for example, Yori has different features on different platforms. We have put notes on here. And I have to say Vesper Wallet, I like it very much because it doesn't have much features, but it's a very beautifully, beautiful mobile wallet. It supports like Face ID, Touch ID. I feel, I feel secure when I use it. A very convenient one. I also want to mention Game Changer. Like, as you can see, not all the categories are ticked here because when we were doing the research, it was down. And last time I checked, it was still down. But it's a very fun wallet to use if you're especially a developer on blockchain because it allows you to design bit tokens. Like it allows you to customize your metadata on the, the most basic way. So Every wallet here usually have strong sites and weak sites. For example, we have address book support, which, which is 
very useful, but not many wallets like to use it. That's why I like Eternal. And we have the cross-chain trade support. Almost not, almost none of them support it yet. Now I will pass to the cross-chain part. Well, can you rewind? Okay. Tell, tell me, which one is your favorite? Uh, on, mo on mobile, Vesper, of course. On desktop, I like Eternal the most. Eternal feels like the one I use most, but it's like it's, it's the UI kills me sometimes. It's like yeah. it's just it, it seems more complicated than it used than it has to be. It's kind of kind of, but I guess it's the one that I've used most anyway. I kind of mm, like totally. Nufi, but the, uh, yeah, Nufi Nufi has a new version uh, that you, you can authenticate with Google or uh, other single sign-ons. Nice. And you don't need nice. to uh, preserve the, the keys, uh, and you never know them. You just have to log in with your Google or iCloud account. Uh -huh. So they, they save the keys for you? Yes, they save the keys inside uh -huh. uh, another blockchain, a distributed blockchain called Torus, and uh, they use a new technology. And, uh, uh, do we know it's safe? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are we should. sure about um, that <laughs> yes it's distributed the uh, Taurus network is especially uh, built for that reason and oh. uh, it's very safe but I personally use Typhoon and Flint uh, but uh, I want to change them because uh, I, I need an open source uh, version mm -hmm. uh, do you trust on the wallets uh, I don't trust them uh, so much I don't know something yeah, yeah. happen to all of us, you know, because we don't know what's inside the code. I think Flint Wallet is uh, open source, no? Can you can just think, trust that one? And did we did we declare that the open source thing here? Uh, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. we have yeah. open source. Yes, it's open source. Yes, correct. So uh, I think I will stick with the Flint one. Yeah. I also very much encourage people to try Game Changer mm -hmm. if you are messing with tokens, metadata. Mm -hmm. The features are so good. That's not the most user friendly wallet I see. And you can't really use it from Turkey because for some reason it just won't load. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. Really? Yeah. Let's, I'm Last, gonna try now. Gamechanger.finance. I even know the yeah. domain name, but it doesn't load. Oh, it works Too now. Long? It, it oh, works nice. now. It no, works now. Right. For like six, six or eight months, it never worked until like maybe March of this year. It wouldn't work for me. Somebody made a typo, I guess. The department yeah. the manager. Maybe, yeah. So. Let's pass to the next part here. We have cross-chain research, which is not yet not yet matured enough, but we have generated very good content about bridges currently. In cross-chain, we have bridges, the oracles that allow smart contracts to communicate with different blockchains, which are very important and I can't quite understand how they work, and so I don't trust them. And we have side chains. I will. I will. Have, I want to talk more about bridges. Like when we done the research, we found different kinds of bridges, centralized and decentralized ones. Like I can say, centralized bridges are very easy to use. They are cheap to use and very fast, but uh, you have to trust the company behind it, the organization behind it. So not very secure, I would say. But on the other side, we have decentralized bridges. They are slow, like your transaction might take a week to happen. They are usually very expensive, but they're much safer than these decentralized bridges. But in general, I would say, Bridges are not the safest option out there. Like, 
use the native assets on their native blockchains. This is my suggestion. And we have decentralized finance tools finally. Uh, in Cardano, we have taken deep dives in different kind of tools like that. For example, Jet, a stable coin, is a decentralized finance tool by definition. Uh, another one is Indigo protocol, which allows you to get real world asset prices to invest in. And another example is Liquid, which is a custodial liquidity protocol allowing you to do lending and borrowing. I think that is, oh, we have Ocean, of course. Uh, in Ocean research, we, we are conducting a research on different large DAOs on different chains and how they conduct their onboarding, governance, or other processes and the tools they use for that tasks and also cross chains, like I mentioned before. We have done, we are currently doing an ocean research and I want to thank Frankie and Creed for their jobs. Uh, we are finding interesting things about the other chain DAOs, like for example, Ethereum blockchain has a really high gas fees, so they managed to eliminate bad proposals before on-chain warnings. They have discussion forums about like they have they're trying to improve and make perfect proposals before votings. They have off-chain votings to eliminate bad ideas before losing money on them. That's a really also, important point actually because they yeah, have exactly. a terrible blockchain that they're working with, like their tools need to kind of compensate for the terribleness of the blockchain. So it's kind of important to not adopt tools before it's the tools are ready and kind of yeah. work without the tools as well. And I think we're at that stage at Cardano where like the tools are just not there yet. We kind of play with them, experiment with them. But if you get in too involved, you're just going to be stuck with the bill of like, okay, this tool kind of sucks and I need to do X so that uh, I can work around this tool's shortcomings. Yeah, amazing things. Like I've, I've checked the governance process of a Ethereum DAO. It was so long to prevent on-chain voting for any idea. Like you probably took like a month to reach that on-chain vote. Sounds like a uh, lot of bro bureaucracy for to me. A lot. Like I would prefer a centralized workplace instead of that one. Yeah, just give me some hierarchy. <laughs> Tell me what to do. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds better than talking about the color of a logo for a month. <laughs> yeah, it's just I just need to go through this 18-step process to submit my proposal and get denied. Yeah, sounds great. I was, I was so surprised when I saw Ethereum gas fees. <laughs> Okay, you just need to pay this $289 to send $5. No problem. Amazing. No problem. Our, our work on Ocean also, like, like I mentioned, entering large DAOs, learning the processes they took. And this is how we found a lot of tools like Snapshots, which is an off-chain uh, tool, governance tool or Aragon. We are getting in, uh, various resources and new tools in Ocean Day, but it is, research is mostly in the middle, like we don't have much to show yet. So I guess this is all. Thanks a lot for the listening. Any questions, very welcome. Thank you, Emir. Uh, just like to drop on one thing. So we're just about done with one of these proposals and the tools of DAO work. Hopefully we will close it in the next three days and be done. Uh, but all of this stuff is open source available on our Git book. Maybe you can share that for just for a second and take us through what it looks like, what it covers. And what we're working on right now with 
and aiming to finish close up in the next month is the ocean tech bits. So what we're going to be doing is like, what are the cross chain tools available on Cardano today? uh and building today and uh what are the DAO tools that are available on all these different chains that like popular DAOs on other chains are already using and we're in this in the thick of this research right now uh so if you want to get involved in all of that please uh, keep updated because we're going to be doing a lot of that work in the next 30 days here we have our good book where chuck can show the DAO tools parts we have categorized all of them like we have the wallets the comparison that is here but also you can read individually each wallets review done by us like all your nfts can be seen on on them we have the remote work tools here as you can see there are a lot of them so we categorize them and let's see we have the blockchain ecosystem like different financial tools interesting tools we find we have the cross chain tools available on cardano the milkomed and microchains are the only ones functional we found unfortunately microchains is down currently probably we only have one now. one now you can also read in more detail our decentralized finance tools like liquid jet like you can find almost anything you want and much more than we talked about this night in gitbook hopefully this will be a good resource at least for you to run your uh, auto gpt on and to take in some uh, good findings but we believe like this kind of covers a lot of space in terms of Cardano tools, what is being built on it, what type of projects exist, uh, especially in the DAO tools department and the wallets. I think we got almost all of those covered. Uh, that should be that should be a good indication, especially for DAO tool builders and people who are looking to use DAO tools. Like, what what can I use? Uh, type of question is probably going to come up a lot. And you got the answer right here, uh, right now. Yeah. That is all I will show. Oh, we have also have the app. Oh yeah. So one last thing we uh, we had uh, on our proposal was to build a map that kind of includes all of this information, and we. Kind of try to do something a little bit different, and we wanted to ask you guys, what do you think? So, tell me what you think. So, this is the world of DAOs, world of decentralized work, and we have all these different categories that we've been talking about, such as governance, with all these different tools within it. And you can find all of them here that we worked on with kind of links. What's the situation with Summon, what's the situation with Agora, Clarity. It's on mainnet on Cardano. What is it? And a link to our work back in the Git book. So this is like a visual map of all the work that we've done. Uh, we're just kind of testing it out to see how it works. We originally thought maybe we could pin this down to different areas of this high-tech city and then call it the Senate building, the, the halls of governance, the marketplace of, uh, I don't know, decentralized exchanges and all of that. But we're kind of playing around with this idea to see, uh, see if it works or not. So lots of different wallets. I want to go through the Discord, their Twitter, all of those things up here. Yeah, we'll drop that in the chat, but looking forward to your feedback on what you guys think about this.
uh, this is incredible. Yeah, this is a this is a, a wonderful overview of the whole Fun Nine, you know, uh, little fish work. Uh, incredible job pulling that all together, and now having it in one spot is really, I mean, it's just inspirational. I would definitely want to feature it in um, the uh, Dow's Love Cardano challenge team and in our meetings as we come up and bring in the new folks in Fun Ten. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Really, really great job. And 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 yeah, Amir is a, a favorite. Thank you, because I know that you you uh, championed a lot of that stuff, putting it through. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Newman. I think we can work together to uh, make sure this work kind of helps out some of the ecosystem. Maybe help some of the DAO tool builders and like uh, spotting the gaps in uh, what types of tools that can be built. Uh, and also DAOs who are looking to kind of use these tools. And also you probably know a few tools that we're missing from here. So uh, if you'll let us know, then we can uh, kind of take a look and expand all this to make sure we got it all up to date. Yeah, certainly, you know, as it moves, you know, as it sort of gets public and sort of people start using it as a tool, because I draw the, I draw the line of a tool, like a tool and documentation, you know, it's a fuzzy, it's a fuzzy line. Like, I think that these documents are tools to use the other tools. You know what I mean? I, I just mm -hmm. have a, it's interesting because Harsha does not have that. <laughs> he's like no no a tool is a tool it's a documentation is a document and i'm like okay that's good um but it, it it will change the ecosystem and it is a stepping stone um for for the development um for instance just the categorization and saying okay these are the these are the categories that we we the piles that we put them in and and then and then you can say, oh, I these this is a remote work tool, or this is a treasury tool, or uh, and and I agree that project management uh, fits in that treasury treasury management because the difference between a DAO is that the projects are connected to wallets, so therefore you know so I I see that now was a that's a design decision that you all made, and it can you know now it will affect it will feedback it's feedback in the system you know and and then and it'll adjust and go so it's it's really beautiful to see um it really does feel like a big big party celebration sort of uh, event for me to see it all together and present it and it's inspiring for what's for yeah to see those gaps and and, and as somebody that's you know using these tools and plans to and you know onboard other communities uh, and find other DAO builders uh, is just exciting. It's just exciting. It's really a yeah. It's a real showpiece, uh, in my opinion. Thanks, Newman. Hopefully, these will be uh, useful to you and you your work. Uh, looking forward to uh, collaborating on how we can make this more uh, helpful for you guys and for the DAO tool makers. Yeah. 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 Nice, you guys have any questions on any of this stuff? Any notes you wanna add? Thank you, it was a great presentation. Thank you, Emir. Uh, yeah, just want to compliment you guys for a, for a good job. Thanks, CJ. You too, man. Uh, I know you done some of this work to help out Amir. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I love oh. reading your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Thanks, man. You're right. All right, then. Thank you, guys. I'm going to say stop that recording right now. Bye, YouTube. Bye. Bye. Bye.